People come here to Barcelona to learn our magic secret like it's Coca-Cola's recipe. But it's not that simple. There is no secret. La Masia is a product of years of hard work by many different people who believed in the same idea and system, which is not a secret either, said iconic La Masia coach Joan Villa in an interview with Michael Burgess in 2016. Now, La Masia is not what it used to be. In 2012, Tito Villanova played with 11 La Masia players for 60 minutes against Levante for the first time in history. In 2010, the world's top three players consisted of Messi, Iniesta and Xavi, according to the voting for the Ballon d'Or. All three were developed by the same school and the same idea, La Masia. Now, expecting that to always remain the case, for La Masia to keep producing at the rate of its 2000s peak was always unrealistic. But today, the contrast is huge. So, what went wrong? And here are a few ideas. Catalan journalists argue that one of La Masia's problems is an inability to get rid of talents and not hold on to them. Pep Segura, formerly in charge of the football department at the club, emphasised in 2014 how important it was to remedy this issue. The possibility of loaning out players is not used well enough. 10% of B players should come to the first team, 40% should be loaned, and the rest should be released to make room for new under-19 players. Hard decisions must be made to not stagnate the system. Now, most youth teams have between 22 and 26 players, which means that many talents sit on the bench without getting enough minutes to develop. Ajax consistently keeps their squad under 18 players. But, for example, Barca's under-18s had a squad of 26, the under-19s 22, and the B-team 24 last season. Talent development around the world suffers from the same paradox. The better the players you produce, the better the first team, and the better the next generation must be to break through. Barca's golden tiki-taka generation emerged during periods of poor results and mediocre squads. There were fewer strong predecessors and expectations were lower, and that meant that there was less pressure and more opportunity to trust in new talents. Ivan Rakitic confirmed this in an interview with Sport in 2018. I would love to see a generation like Puyol, Xavi, Iniesta, Valdez and Messi emerge every second year, Rakitic said. But it's not easy. Barcelona has reached such a high level that there is no room to test and then see what happens. The player must really be talented before it's possible. If the first team was worse, it would have been much easier. While the first team has become much better, another phenomenon is also seen within the club that increases the pressure on talent, results-based football. Johan Cruyff was known to always ask the youth coaches how their team had played in a given match and never what the result had been. But Cruyff's ideology has been diluted. Barcelona has evolved from the mantra that we must develop players to a more homogenized we must win. Take the B team as an example. In 2007, Guardiola and Tito Villanova took over an historically bad B team who'd just been relegated to the fourth division. Guardiola introduced a new system of foundation players. These players were typically purchased from other clubs and were older than the others. They helped to get short-term results but still left room for young talents to develop. However, it was important that they were sold again inside two years so that there would not be an obstacle to homegrown youngsters. When Eusebio became the B-team coach in 2011, he took this system too literally. The foundation players went from having a supporting function to taking the place of starlets. This ideology that prioritizes short-term results has spread since Sandro Rossell's presidency. The transfer policy shows the fear of bad results from using academy players. Why sell Grimaldo in the winter of 2015 and buy Lucas Digne next summer? Why buy midfielders such as Andre Gomez and Paulinho when players like Carlos Alenia and Sergio Roberto waited patiently for their chance? And this goes beyond players too, with B-team coaches like Jordi Vinyas and Gerard Lopez, sacked because the team was relegated. After a match in 2010, Guardiola stated that the biggest victory is to give a La Masia player their debut. A total of 28 young talents from La Masia made their debut during Guardiola's reign, but since his resignation in 2012, the flow has dramatically subsided. Short-term success is one of the big factors behind this recession. 
Although Tito Villanova, Guardiola's successor, put 11 La Masia players on the field against Levante in November 2012, he only gave one academy player a debut during his year in charge. The lucky one was Carlos Planas, who's now playing his football at Eichlanaca. Luis Enrique and Valverde have been so focused on results that they too have rarely trusted in La Masia products. In April 2018, Barca lined up without any La Masia graduates for the first time in 16 years. And Piquet also acknowledged in August of that year that the lack of confidence shown in youth is part of the problem. The more confidence you give for your own breeding, the greater the chance there is for those to stay. However, it is also true that some youth players choose money over the sports project. Andres Iniesta agrees that helping to build belief is key. There will always be quality players because we have the world's best academy. The problem is to give them hope and confidence. So Gerard Piquet mentioned the influence of money in youth football. Now every time an agent seals a new contract for their player, they get a commission. The bigger the contract, the greater the bonus. Agents can have, apart from taking care of the player's administrative work, a hidden agenda. At the same time, we see a tendency for big clubs to happily use extreme sums of money on their youth academies, which increases the pull effect to the benefit of the agents. Real Madrid has spent 100 million euros on the renewal of their talent academy La Fabrica, and most recently bought 18-year-old Vinicius Jr. for 45 million euros. In 2014, Manchester City opened a brand new academy that cost 220 million euros. The architects behind that project are of course former leaders during Joan Laporta's presidency, Chiki Bagiristan, who is sports director, and Ferran Soriano, who is the CEO. In Europe, only Ajax refused to work with agents working with players under the age of 16. Barca lacks, like many others, a way or the courage to deal with this money-prone tendency encouraged by the expenditure of big clubs on youth football. Pep Segura, the former head of football, shared his thoughts on the problem. We always try to help our youth players, but we will never pay what some agents demand. This involves extreme sums, like 1 to 2 million euros for a guarantee that a player who's already ours will stay with us. Some players walking away from La Masia, owing to jaw-dropping sums that they can receive at other clubs, is a consequence of Barca remaining resistant to that manipulation. Prior to Laporta taking charge of the club in 2003, La Masia was the product of work done by coaches and leaders that have been there for decades. Oriol Tort, Loreano Ruiz, and Juan Martinez Villaseca were the first masters that bred the academy from its start in 1979 until the end of the millennium. Along the way, in the 80s and 90s, came teachers like Juan Villa, Albert Benege, Quique Costas, Rafaldo Borrell, Paco Surelio, Albert Capayas, and Alex Garcia. When Laporta became president, FC Barcelona was in a dilemma. The commercialization of football was accelerating, and big money was pumped into certain clubs by hyper-wealthy people and organizations. This divided FC Barcelona. Should they keep on being unique, or should they go with the flow and forget traditions? Sandro Russell, the then vice president, was the first one to quit. He did so in 2005 as a protest against Laporta's romantic approach to the issues. He wrote books decrying Laporta's naivety, and in 2010 was elected as his successor. In the wake of a politically divided FC Barcelona, Russell replaced his enemies with his own supporters. He fired Benege, Alexanco, and Capayas, who were in charge of the academy, and instead brought in Guillermo Amor and Albert Puig, only to sack them in 2014 in response to the scandal involving Barcelona's acquisition of foreign miners. Later that year, Rossell himself resigned suddenly because of controversies regarding the club's deal to sign Neymar. Vice President at the time, Josep Bartomeu, took the reins, creating further change. Since Laporta's presidency, constant switches in organization and personnel have continued to occur due to politics, scandals and resignations. It's a flux which runs contrary to the implementation of Barcelona's core principles. Ideas, especially like Barca's, take time to teach to children and coaches and leaders simply didn't have enough time to impart their wisdom before another would take over and change direction. So, in the time since then, coaches, teachers and ideas have come and gone, including the La Masia 360 project, conceived as a residence and school for academy prospects. The implementation of further structural changes occurred in 2019, but the integration of homegrown talent into the first team remains an issue in need of resolution. In search of minutes, many prospects have left La Masia for other clubs, and in our final part of this series, we'll take a look at those 
who left Barcelona behind. 